What's happening, Hypesters? Welcome back to another Hype Hype feature tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about the PixArt tools, which will allow you to create pixel art assets to use in your games. This is a very cool, very powerful tool. There's a lot to it. So this isn't gonna be so much a tutorial as it is an overview of the pixel art tools, but we are going to look at all of the ins and the outs of using the PixArt editor. So to get started, where do we find PixArt? We navigate to the build menu and then we tap on the PixArt tab. And in here, once we're in the PixArt tab, we can see all of the PixArt assets that we already have in this example hype. This is, by the way, a tutorial on how to use the PixArt tools. If you like, you can go and do that right in the app and it'll give you a lot of the information I'm gonna give you here in this video. Okay, so from here, we can, of course, add any of these sprites to our scene. I'm not gonna keep those there for now. And then we can duplicate any of these sprites or create a new sprite with the plus on the left. We can, of course, delete from there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sprite for the purposes of this tutorial. Now, once we have a new sprite created, we can select it from the list and we can hit the little pencil icon to open up the PixArt editor. Once we're in the editor, basic controls are simple, two fingers to move around, and of course, pinch and spread to zoom in or zoom out. On the left-hand side here, we have all our tools. Uh, we have a brush, line, select area, fill, erase, and the color picker. Uh, we also have, once a tool is selected, you can select it again, and it'll give up a few variations of that tool. Uh, for example, in the line tool here, we can also do rectangles, circles, and filled rectangles or filled circles. And if we do one of those, you can see it's just going to create a box for us. Boom, whatever we draw, there it is. Of course, the area select is going to let us select uh, an area within the drawing. The first one here works kind of like a brush, except for it's just a selected area. So we can adjust the size of the brush here on the side. And then we can just tap anywhere and it creates the selection. We also have here a rectangular selection tool, which will allow us to draw a rectangle and select that area. And then finally, we have the magic wand, which will, of course, select a single color uh, of pixels. Uh, I'll go back here to this one. Oops. And notice now here, when we have a selection made, we get a little widget, which allows us to move that selection. Uh, we can rotate the selection if it is uh, unified dimensions. So this is a circle, so all the dimensions are the same. If we had a perfect square, we could rotate that, but a rectangle will not be able to rotate. Um, we can flip it vertically or horizontally. Uh, we can copy it and make a new selection of that. Uh, and of course, we can resize. and then tap again to cancel the selection area. We can also fill, so we have a fill thing here. It's gonna fill in the area. We have some open holes at the top of our circle there. So maybe we undo the fill, we grab a brush, fill in those holes, and then we can do a fill, and you see it'll just fill in that area. Uh, eraser should be pretty self-explanatory. We can erase, we can change the size of the eraser on the right here, and then we can erase a larger area. You can, of course, if you have just a part of the area you want to erase, a nice easy way to do that would be to make a selection and then grab the eraser and we can just quickly erase what is in the selection. And then finally, of course, the color picker is gonna automatically select whatever color you pick from the bottom uh, color tab, which I'll get to in just a moment. Before we get to there, uh, we do have a few uh, tools on the bottom that we're gonna look at. Uh, so we have, we have undo and redo here. 
the lock is pretty important for certain things. So the lock, we can lock movement to horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or free. Uh, this definitely comes into play when we make a selection area. If I make this horizontal, then I can only move it left and right. If I make this vertical, I can only move it up and down. If I make it diagonal, I can only move it on a diagonal line. Uh, and then, of course, free, I can move it anywhere I want. This also comes in really handy uh, when we're scaling. So if we want to keep our dimensions of our rectangle here while we scale, we'll put that on diagonal. And then that way, as we scale, it's keeping uh, those dimensions. Whereas if it was free, we'd have to be really careful. You can see we can really quickly stretch those dimensions. And then, of course, if it is horizontal or vertical, uh, we're only going to scale on the horizontal or vertical. So the random is just a fun little extra tool which will essentially fill in random colors as you paint. So if I make my brush a little bit bigger here and I just, whoops, I have no color selected there. And I just uh, fill in, you can see I'm getting all the colors of my palette randomly on every pixel. This will also work uh, for a selection area. So if we hit the select and then we hit that random, it's going to fill in random colors everywhere that has a pixel. And then the last two here, play and import, we're going to come back to in a moment. But essentially play, you can preview your framed animations. And with import, we can import some pictures. Very powerful stuff. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But before we do, we have one more drawing tool here I would like to highlight for you. And that is in the upper left here, we have the symmetry tools. So I can drag a line out here, for example, and uh, it will now mirror whatever I draw on the opposite side. So let's say, I don't know, whoops, that's a huge brush. Let's bring our brush size down. Let's say maybe I want to make like a skull. Boom, boom, whoops. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Super easy, super quick skull, symmetry tools, very handy stuff. Uh, and of course, there is a vertical one as well. And if we do that, it's going to copy on into four quadrants. Okay, so now let us move on to the tabs. At the bottom, we have three tabs here. The first is color. So the sprites work with a color palette. Each sprite will have its own color palette or they can share color palettes. But each sprite has a color palette that can have a maximum of 16 colors. And uh, you will use those colors in that particular sprite. Uh, a very cool use for this is that you can really easily switch color palettes on a sprite to kind of quickly turn a sprite into like maybe different lighting conditions. Like you could have like a daytime version and a nighttime version, and you don't need to draw a whole new sprite for the nighttime version. You can just go in, create a new color palette and change the colors to fit whatever you need to make the character look darker for nighttime. Um, we can see here, we can scroll through the colors. The first color is always an alpha. So that means it has no pixel. Um, and if you replace this color, you'll see now we, we're not able to really have proper transparency anymore on this, uh, on our sprite. So you always wanna keep that first one blank. But any of these other colors, we can go and edit and you see, as I edit them there, the color will change uh, in my sprite that I've drawn. Boop, boop, I'm gonna get rid of those. On the left here, we have our color palettes. There's a few in here already because this is an example height, but normally you would just start with one and you can duplicate, create new as you wish. You can, of course, also rename the currently selected color palette. Just for the sake of argument, let's create a whole new color palette. So we're gonna call this palette test. Not sure I spelled that right, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then we have that selected. We can see here, this is the default color palette it has given us because we, collect, we selected to create a new one. 
But again, I can go in, I can change any of these colors. You saw when I changed the color palette, that color that I had changed is now back to black because black is the first color in this palette. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with these is if you are sharing color palettes between different sprites, changing the color palette for one sprite will change the color palette for every sprite that is using that palette. So be careful when you are creating or editing sprites that you know where they are being used. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at frames and frames is really fun because this allows us to create animated sprites by having multiple frames in our sprite. So on the left here, of course, like the color palettes, we can create, duplicate, or delete the currently selected sprite. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to duplicate and we'll get a second version of this smiley face I quickly put together. And then let's say uh, I'm going to grab my eraser here, make it a little bit smaller. We're just going to erase part of the eye there. Then I'm going to duplicate that again. We're going to erase a little more of the eye there. And then I will duplicate it one more time. And we'll have just a line. Uh, and then when we play that, we got a wink and smiley face man. Cool, yeah? So there we go. That's a really basic example of what you can do with frames. And in just a moment, I'm going to make a little bit of a nicer one. But first, let's take a look at the Manage tab. So in the Manage tab, we have a bunch of settings for our sprite. Uh, first, a few settings for the editor. So we have this grid that you can see on the canvas. We can turn that off gives us a more clear view of what we're working on. We can also get rid of that checkered gray box background and just go full black. Of course, my drawing is also black, so we cannot see it. But if you had a non-black drawing, you would be able to see it on the black background. Uh, we have onion skins here, which is very cool. Uh, comes with the framed animation. So if I turn this to one, and we go here and we cycle through our frames. You can see there that you can see uh, semi-transparent the previous frame as we go through. Uh, this is very useful for when you're doing your own animations. You can see what has come before and use that to judge how the image should change to get the animation that you want. Onion skinning, very cool. Um, definitely though, you only want to have that on when you're using it because otherwise it can be quite distracting when you're trying to draw. Uh, then we have a few other settings for the sprite itself. Of course, there's the name. We should always name our sprites. Just like everything else in the editor so we can find them so we know what is what. Naming everything's important. We can also here change the dimensions of our sprite. By default, uh, new sprites are going to be 64 by 64, but they can go all the way up to 256 by 256. I'm not going to keep it there, though. We're going to keep this as 64 for now. Uh, and then finally, we have animation frames. Animation frames is basically how fast your animation is going to play. Uh, when it plays in the runtime of the game. And the number here is actually the number of runtime frames that it will stay on a single frame before it moves to the next one. So currently we're at 12 frames. High Pipe runs at 60 frames per second, which means at this animation speed, we'll get five frames of our sprite animation every second. 12 times 5, 60. 60 divided by 12, 5. Same math. All right, so that is most of the features. We have one more very cool thing to look at. Before we jump in here, I'm going to delete what we have because we are going to import some images. Let's get rid of everything here. We want to start from scratch. So I'm going to hit import. And from here, it's going to try and uh, access your files on whatever device that you're using. And from there, you can import JPEG or PNG files. Um, and then a very cool thing, if you're somebody that's already familiar with working with pixel art and as particularly animated pixel art, you can import sprite sheets and cut them up into frames, which is what we're going to do right now. Um, and I've now, for this example, I've isolated out just one of the animations here that we're going to select from my file list, and we're going to hit open. Now, this is going to bring up a dialogue. Uh, we can import it as raw, which will just import it as an image. 
Uh, it is going to resize it down to the max size of 256 by 256, but it's going to keep a little more detail than if it was actual pixel art. Uh, the thing about that, though, is you're not going to be able to edit it afterwards. So what we want to do here is not hit import raw, but what we do want to do is slice our image. Now, I know uh, that this image has nine frames of character animation, and it is set up in a row. So there's going to be one row with nine columns. Now, one thing you want to make sure you're doing when you are doing this, if you are going to import uh, a character or a sprite sheet with some animations, um, you want to make sure that it's laid out properly so that everything is nicely in squares so that you can slice it nicely. First, let's see what it is when it is nicely laid out. I got nine columns, one row. We're going to import. And there we go. There's my character. It's giving me all nine frames here. If we cycle through, we can see we have a walking animation. And if we hit play, we get that walking animation. Okay, so now we've created our sprite. We can go back to the regular Hype Hype editor and use our sprite in our game. So as I showed earlier from the tab here, we can just drag this sprite into the game world. He's a little small, so I'm gonna make him a little bit bigger. And now we can kind of move this guy around like we would any other game character. Let's reset our view here so we can Place him in a nice place. Set him back there a little bit. The, still the scale is a little weird, but it's all right. It's all right. All right, so there's our guy. Uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm not going to make him controllable or anything, but we will show what we can do with this. So for one, it does still use a material color here. Um, and it's by default, it's the pure white here. We could go white, which is a, has a little more kind of darkness to it. And you can see he got a little bit darker. We could go yellow and you see it put a yellow tint over there. Now, one thing we'll notice if we hit play, our dude's just standing there. But we know that he has an animation. He can walk. So how do we make him walk? We're going to go into the advanced tab here and we're going to head on over to the node library. And in the visual category, we're going to grab the PixArt controller. Um, and now if we want the animation to play, we don't have to do anything. PixArt controller is in there. When we hit play, you can see now that animation is playing. We could also, if we wanted to, we could hit a fixed frame and then we can choose which frame displays. It no longer plays the animation. It's gonna stay on that frame. Um, for this particular sprite, not going to be super useful, but you could do something, for example, like we have a tree here, right? We could go into our tree sprite. Uh, we could add more frames and have different variations of this tree. And then using the Pixar controller, all of the sprites that have the tree, we can just select which tree we want to show with the frames. And finally, this is now an object that we could move like any other object. So let's say we move this guy off to the scene, off to the side a little bit. We're going to go now to the logic menu. We're going to add a node. Uh, let's just get a simple mover node. We're going to attach it to our sprite. And we're going to say this guy is going to move, uh, I don't know, one, one every second. Let's loop it. We're gonna execute that on start. Might be a little fast. Let's see. No, it's pretty slow, but I forgot to turn the animation back on. So we'll go back in, we'll turn off that fixed frame and we'll go and there we go. Now we got this guy walking through the scene. A little slow, I wanna make that faster. That looks all right. And there we go. That was a quick overview of the PixArt editor and the PixArt controller, which allow you to create and use PixArt assets in your games. These are really fun, powerful tools. I've been having a blast playing around with them, and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for joining me. Peace out, hypesters. Screen sync. About the PixArt tools, the PixArt editor, and the PixArt controller. I already, I hate my tone of voice in here. We need to dial it back a little bit. We're not hosting a stream. It's a video. We are going to call this failed, failed jest. <laughs>
Let's move on to frames now. Frames is really cool stuff. <laughs> Until next time, I've been Shogun. This has been a hype hype tutorial. It's not a stream, dude. I knew when I started talking, I knew what I was going to say at the end. But by the time I got to the end, <laughs> really cool, fun, powerful new tools that allow you to create pixel art assets. <clears throat> How is this the hardest part? How?